heart of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> And now for another thrilling adventure of The Shadow. Today's story, The Night Marauder. The Shadow, a mysterious character who furthers the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The Shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of The Shadow belongs. As the scene opens in our story, it is night. Dark, still night, and we find ourselves the unseen observers of two vague figures moving almost silently across a window sill and into a darkened bedroom where lies asleep a beautiful girl at peace with the world. Then, out of the stillness. Hello, darling. What? Well, what happened? Are you all right? Well, who was it? A short, powerful man. A monster. Why, you're dreaming, darling. Yes? They ransacked your whole room. Well, that sounds like the night marauder. Margot, I'm coming right over as soon as I call Commissioner Weston. Now, don't worry. I'll be right there. Goodbye. Margo, are you all right? Yes, I guess so. My throat's a little bruised. Your throat? Yes, one of them had his fingers wrapped around my neck. Well, that's horrible. I guess that's what's known as getting fingerprints the hard way. <laughs> now, this is no joking matter, Margo. Oh, I'm aware of that every time I swallow. Did you see what they look like? Only the one by my bed. But I could hear the other one crawling around the room. Ooh, it was creepy. What did the one by your bed look like? Well, the best description I can think of at the moment is Frankenstein's homely brother. He was quite short, with long arms and a really bestial face. Well, that's an ugly description. It was an ugly face. And that's probably Commissioner Weston. I asked him to come over. Come in, Commissioner. Thank you, Cranston. How are you, Miss Lane? All right, now, thanks. Now, uh, where did it happen? Right in here, in my bedroom. Did they take anything of value? A few years off my life. Yeah, no doubt. Now, uh, tell me just what took place, Miss Lane. Well, I'm a little hazy as to detail. You see, I was asleep, and I was dreaming about pumpkin pies. You what? Honest pumpkin pies. You know, the kind that Mother never makes. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Lane, but uh, uh, tell me about your waking moments. Don't you like pumpkin pies? I adore pumpkin pies, Miss Lane. But this is a police investigation, not a cooking class. I'll listen to your dream later, Margot. Thank you, darling. Uh, do you mind right. with... Oh, sorry. Well, I was awakened by the realization that something was grasping my throat. And it, incidentally, wasn't pumpkin pie. Miss Lane, please. I started to scream, but the man put his other hand across my mouth. And then the other man ransacked your room, is that right? Yes, how'd you know? Well, I... He ought to know. The same two nocturnal nimrods have been driving Commissioner Weston and his department slightly insane. Now, uh, it's not that bad, Cranston. We'll have them both under lock and key any day now. Oh, then you know who they are? Uh, well, not exactly. Do you even vaguely know who they are? Well, Not we... exactly, eh, Commissioner? We know how they work, and, well, we... And you know they're burglars. Yes, we know they're bur... I mean, the department always catches up with crimes, Miss Lane. Well, I'd like to catch up with these criminals myself, Commissioner. If you need a running mate, I wish you'd count on me. Uh, no, thanks. But I appreciate your offer. I see. There's uh, just one thing I think you should know before I leave, Miss Lane. Yes, Commissioner? I really do like pumpkin pie. Good night. <laughs> well, that was a nice, chummy little investigation. But I failed to see that it proved anything. It didn't. And Weston's pretty worried, too. Lamont, I don't like that glint in your eye. Are you going to get mixed up in this? Definitely. Oh, Lamont. Now, you go back to bed, Margot. I'll come over in the morning and we'll figure out how the shadow can track down the night marauders. <laughs> You don't know how fortunate you were last night. What do you mean, Lamont? Yeah, look at this newspaper. 
Night marauders turned to murder. Murder? Yes. The body of John Kenyon was discovered this morning by his valet. He'd been brutally murdered sometime before dawn today. Due to the deep bruises on his throat and the fact that his bedroom had been ransacked, Commissioner Weston admitted that the night marauders were unquestionably guilty. Oh, Lamont. It might have been I. Yes, Margot. May I use your phone? Yes, surely. I'm going to ask Weston again if I can work with him. If he doesn't want me, I'm going to work on this case by myself. He can't tell Lamont. Maybe he'll make you a special deputy or something. <laughs> That's right. He might have. Hello? Police Department? I'd like to speak to Commissioner Weston, please. Commissioner Weston. No, no, no. Weston. W-E-S-T-O-N. You know, the head of your department. Yes, that's it. That's right. <laughs> Alfredo said he tried to find him. Oh, that's fine. They're supposed to catch criminals, and they can't even find their commissioner. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is Cranston, Commissioner. I just read about the night marauder's latest crime, and I'd still like to lend a hand in rounding them up. I think that I could... Oh, I see. You are not running a school for detectives, huh? Goodbye. Nice fellow. Did you read this, Lamont? What is? Henry Burns, an employee of the city, is quoted as having seen two figures leap from Kenyon's window at about the same hour that the crime was committed. Good. That's something to work on. Well, what do you plan to do? I wouldn't be surprised if the shadow paid a call on Henry Burns tonight. Thanks for making sure I got home safely. I guess you can go now, officer. Oh, uh, no. Not until I take a look around your apartment, Mr. Burns. Now, you're so nervous. Sit up on mouse. Nervous? How would you like to be locked up all day in a room the size of a cigar box? And hour after hour, face the inquisition of questions hammered at your head. Ah, uh, now, they were only trying How to... would you like it? Answer me, how would you like it? Hey, look, Mr. Burns, you'd better take it easy. I'll be dead before morning. Now, no one's going to kill you, Mr. Burns, not with me on the job. I'll be right downstairs. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Well, Mr. Burns. What? Who said that? I did. Well, where are you? Who are you? I am the Shadow. Shadow? I've heard of you, but I, I can't see you. I cloud men's minds so they cannot see me. Oh, you did that to me, huh? Yes. Now, see here, Mr. Burns. I haven't come here for any other purpose than to act as your friend, to help you. Please believe me. Uh -huh. Somehow I do believe you, Shadow. Good. Then tell me what you saw last night. Oh, I can't. I can't, I tell you, I just can't. Why can't you? I was hoping that you'd be different from the rest. But it's just the same series of questions. What did you see? What did they look like? What Wait did a they... minute, Mr. Burns. I came in with you and the officer that escorted you home. You told him you expected to die. Yeah. To die? Yeah, that's right. I expect to be killed. I'm not afraid to die. Since you're not afraid to die, Mr. Burns, why shouldn't you tell me what you saw last night? I hadn't thought of it that way. As long as you're going to get me anyway, why shouldn't I tell? All right. I did see something. It was horrible, Shadow. Horrible, I tell you. Don't be afraid. Well, I... I was walking home. I, I passed the apartment house where the murder was committed. I heard a weird call. An unearthly sound from nowhere. I turned and saw two figures that appeared silently from a second-story window. They slipped to the ground without a sound and hurried. Half running, half walking. Disappeared in the shrubbery across the street at the edge of the park. One of them was short, massive, unbelievably horrible to see. And the other in his hands... <coughs> What was that? Look at your feet. Huh? A piece of rock with some paper tied to it. I know. I know. It's the night marauders. I know. It's from them. Read it. Pick it up and read it. All right. All right. Dead men and wise men say nothing. You have the choice of being either dead or wise. Sign the night marauders. Dead or wise. Put the note on the table. All right. It's the first clue. And from that very scrap of paper, the police may be able to get fingerprints. A hundred leads to the solution of these crimes. Maybe you're right. Maybe the police could find the night marauders. Hurry, take it. Take it to the police. That note may save my life. I will. And now, Mr. Burns. Yeah? I suggest that you try to get some rest. The police are on guard. You're safe enough here. I guess you're right. You go out this way. Good night. Good night. Rest well. Hmm? 
rest well. Dead men and wise men say nothing. Let me look at the body. Oh, I can't stand this. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Still breathing a little. Be quiet, stand back. Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns, can you hear me? Can you hear me? The shadow. The shadow. So he's the guy behind the riddle of the night marauders. I want a list of every piece of jewelry that the night marauders have stolen from their victims. Uh, yes, sir. Has any of it turned up at the pawn shop yet? No, sir, not a piece. We've been checking every fence for months, sir. All right, then we'll... Yes? Good morning, Commissioner. I believe you're looking for me for the murder of Henry Byrne. Well, who's this? The Shadow, Commissioner. The Shadow? Yes. But have this call to at once. Get every squad car and tower in action. Right, sir. Now, uh, uh, what did you say, Shadow? Commissioner, I know you're having this case. I was in Henry Byrne's apartment. While I was there, a stone was thrown through the window. It had a note attached to it. We didn't find any note. I know you didn't. I have the note. I'll send it to you tomorrow. I'd better hang up now. You may trace this call faster than I anticipate. Goodbye, Commissioner. Uh, wait! Wait! Commissioner. Well, Murphy, did you uh, trace the call? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Squad car is on the way? No, sir. Why not? The call came from the phone booth here in headquarters. The call? Here in headquarters? Well, did you get him? Uh, no, sir. There was no one in sight, sir. Well, this is great. The shadow is now insulting the department with the department's own nickel. Ah. The park's beautiful tonight, isn't it? Mm, yes, the man. What good does it do me? No, Margo. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. I'll behave. You know, Lamont, I made a dreadful mistake last night. And what was that? Well, I just remembered. It wasn't the kind of pumpkin pies that Mother made at all. What wasn't the kind of pumpkin pies that Mother... My dream! It was apple dumplings. <laughs> now, wasn't that silly of me? Whatever made me think it was pumpkin pies? I don't... Hey, driver! Uh, watch out for that car. It's cutting you off the road. Yeah, I see the car. Whoa! Steady now! Good evening, Miss Frankson. Commissioner Weston. Hey, you gave us a scare. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner, I was just telling the mom. It wasn't pumpkin pie at all last night. It was apple dumplings. Uh, what was which? A dream, Commissioner. Last night, you remember. Oh, oh, yes, I did. Uh, well, uh, I recognized you two riding along, and I thought I'd give you a little tip on detecting, Miss Frankson. Really? And what's that? While you're driving around the park for a breath of fresh air, enjoying the sunset after a good dinner... And a very good dinner it was, too, Commissioner. Yes. I am driving around in the park because after analysis, I discovered that all of the crimes of the night marauders have taken place within a block of the park. What do you think of that? Well, is that what you call a clue, Commissioner? Is that what I call it? It's the first significant fact we've unearthed. Do you really think that the shadow is guilty, Commissioner? What else am I to think? He tried to mislead us today by calling up about some phony letter. And furthermore, I think he's right here in this park. Oh, no, Commissioner. Yes, sir, that's what I think. And I have a hunch we'll pick him up tonight. Well, I must be going. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, maybe he's going to beat you to the punch after all. Maybe you've got something there. <laughs> Come on. What is it, Martha? You're white as a sheep. Did you hear that weird call? Oh, yes, but well, what about it? That's the call I heard last night. I heard it while that man still had his hand on my throat. 
And when he heard it, he looked up and then let go immediately. Are you sure it's the same call? Oh, Lamont, do you think I could forget one detail of that awful experience? Driver, uh, stop here. Yes, sir. It sounds as though it came from over there, but the zoo. Uh, we're going to walk a bit. We'll be back shortly. Very good, sir. All right, don't you get Margot. Uh, yeah. Uh, Margot, on second thought, I think you'd better go back and stay in the carriage. All right. Oh, but be careful, Lamont, please. I'll be as quiet as a shadow. Get back, buddy. Get back. You want me to clean your cage, don't you? There, that's better. Now you stay over there where you belong, Freddy. <laughs> ah, you know, Freddy, you're a very interesting playmate. Oh, you're a little rough once in a while, but when you figure it out, you're quite like a human. Ah, we've been friends for a long time, eh, Freddy? <laughs> yes, I remember when you first came here. Yes, you were just a little fellow. Now you're a full-grown gorilla. The finest specimen in captivity. Yes. <laughs> Why, when you came here, you weren't any bigger than Jocko. <laughs> uh, if you could only read, Freddy, you'd laugh, too. <laughs> Do you know what the papers said today, Freddy? <laughs> they said that the shadow killed that man last night. Yes, silly fools, as if the shadow had the strength to do what you did to that man. <laughs> but fools, why should he get credit for those murders, Freddy? Oh, <laughs> uh -oh, but it's just as well, until you get more experience, Freddy, yes. Then, then no one will take credit for our work. You know, Freddy, we can rule this whole city. And you know how, Freddy? Through fear. Oh. Here now, now, what's the matter with you? Here now, now, shut up, Freddy, shut up there now. What's the matter with you? <laughs> what was that? It's the shadow. Shadow? Where are you? Here in the cage, with you and your gorilla. Oh, you're the man nobody can see. Uh, what are you doing here? I've been standing here listening to you talk to your friend, Freddy. So you've heard everything I said? Yes. And we keepers always talk to our animals there. They are more quiet when they hear our voices. It doesn't make any difference what we say just so long as we talk. Now, what I said meant nothing, Shadow. Nothing at all. No! <laughs> now, Shadow, you and Freddy are locked alone in the cage. And he knows you're in the cage. You may be able to hypnotize my mind so I can't see you. But you can't do it to a gorilla, can you? Can you? You're right. I can't. Oh, the shadow is afraid of Freddy, is he? No. But you will be, because in a minute I'm going to tell Freddy to kill you. But first, I thought maybe you'd like to ask me about the night marauder. Shadow... May I present the night marauders? Little Jocko, the monkey who is in the cage down at the end. Freddy, the gorilla. And there's Raina and Ray. Joseph Shankwell. Yes, it's a pleasure to at last be able to introduce us, even if it is only to a doomed man. <laughs> yes. Tell me, Shadow. Would you be visible after Freddy killed you? That remains to be seen. But tell me more about your crimes, Joseph Shankro. They are not crimes. They are adventures. Oh, You're not quiet, pretty quiet. It's not quite the time yet. Shadow, I'm going to be a great power. Power through fear is my motto. Why did you turn to murder? Oh, I was tired of getting jewelry. I wanted a new adventure. I have all the jewelry I need right now hidden beneath you. <laughs> beneath the cage you're standing in. But now, Shadow, comes the newest of my adventures. I'm going to see you die. <laughs> yes, you know too much to be tired. I'm tired of talking to you. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> that's very amusing. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Freddy. Now's the time. Kill. Kill, Freddy. Kill. Freddy, do you hear me? Kill him. Fast him to death. Kill him. <laughs> well, Joseph Shankro, your power is gone. Your gorilla will no longer do what you want. Freddy, obey me. 
killed him. He will not obey you anymore, Joseph Shanko. He belongs to me. I too know and understand animals. Freddy won't kill me. Yes, he will. Freddy, kill him. Do you hear me? I'm coming in there with a slip. I'll cut you to ribbon, Freddy. Then you'll know who your master is. You fool. Don't open the door. Stay out. Stay away from him. Then you'll learn your master's here. Don't hit him. Then you'll kill when I tell you to. Stop it. You feel that, Freddy. You're mad. Stop it, I tell you. Like this, Freddy. Now you, now you know who's your master. You'll do what I say. Now kill, Freddy. Kill. No, 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 please. Stop it, Freddy. Stop it, go. Stop. Let go, Freddy. Stay back, please. Stay back. All right, Miss Lane? Yes. Oh, Commissioner Weston, did you fire those shots? Yes, I did. I was standing behind that tree there. Now, uh, just a second. Well, what are you doing? I'm shutting the cage door. A shadow's in here. Ah, this is a great moment for me. The gorilla is dead. The night marauders are no more. And I have at last caught the shadow. Not quite yet, Commissioner. Uh, the shadow? I was right here. I heard everything that went on between you and Joseph Janko. I know you're not guilty of murder, but still, there are a lot of things I want to know about you, and you won't get out of that cage until I find them out. But I am out, Commissioner. I came out when the gorilla escaped. And if you don't believe it, you'll find a bullet in the back of the gorilla that didn't come from your gun. Better luck next time, Commissioner. <laughs> Miss Lane, if, if you were not here, I'd say a few things that no gentleman should ever say. Well, I don't mind if you do say them, but let me first say thank you for saving my life. Well, I did my bit, but I'm afraid that some of the thanks belongs to Shadow. So help me, someday I'm going to find out who he is. Margo, Margo, are you all right? Yes, Lamont. I heard shot. Good heavens, but really, he, he didn't hurt you, did he? No, Lamont, he was dead before he got near me. The commissioner saved my life. Well, for that, Commissioner, I shall never be able to thank you enough. Well, sir, you weren't in on the kill, Lamont, in case the night marauders has been solved. And, Lamont, except for a very bad break, I would have been able to introduce you to the shadow. Really, Commissioner? I can think of nothing more interesting than to have you introduce me to the shadow. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> 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 